In this video, the fourth in our series on how to solve for x, we're going to talk about simplifying mathematical expressions. And specifically, we're going to talk about when you can and cannot cancel. For example, on the left side of the screen, we are allowed to cancel these 5s, as well as these x minus 11s within parentheses. However, we are not allowed to cancel these x's. To cancel those x's would be an illegal maneuver. It turns out that when you approach expressions and you attempt to simplify, you have to know the rules on when you can and cannot cancel. You have to have a game plan. And in this video, I hope to provide you with the strategy, provide you with the rules as to when you can and when you cannot cancel. After I present the rules to you, we're going to review several examples, so by the end of this video, you'll have lots of experience applying the rules. I'm going to present the rules to you in three parts. Part one is that factors and multiplication signs are your friends. Here in this first expression, there is an implicit multiplication sign, as you know, between the 5 and the x. That makes 5 and x factors. When you have factors, when you have multiplication signs, you are allowed to cancel. So this expression on the left would simplify to x. On the right side, we have a fraction. And I encourage my students to reduce their fractions by breaking down the numerator and denominator into factors. When you do this, you are allowed to cancel. And I like for my students to use this method because it gets them in the habit of canceling when there are factors, when there are multiplication signs. They get used to canceling legally. And I find it to be very helpful, helpful for students to understand the cancellation process. Rule number two is that plus signs and minus signs are not your friend. Unlike when you have two numbers or a number and a variable being multiplied by one another, as we said in the previous slide, these are called factors. When you have a variable or a variable and a constant separated by a plus sign or a minus sign, these are called terms, not factors. So this is a term, and this is a term. And when you have terms, you are not allowed to cancel. The plus sign and minus sign are not your friend. They prevent you from canceling this x. On the right side, the fact that there are plus signs and minus signs prevent you from canceling this x, or this y, or these 11s. All of those were illegal maneuvers. Now, I do understand that this 9 and the x are factors, but together they constitute one term. And when you have terms separated by minus signs or plus signs, you are not allowed to cancel. The third rule is that parentheses are your friend. Parentheses are a game changer when it comes to the cancellation process, because when you have parentheses, you are allowed to cancel even if you have the minus sign and the plus sign present. This expression on the left, we have 5 times x minus 3. I understand that there is a minus sign here. However, the fact that it's within the parentheses allows you to cancel out the x minus 3. On the right side, we have a plus sign. However, it is within parentheses. And even though we have a plus sign, we are allowed to cancel these tens. Now, something very important, ladies and gentlemen. When you have parentheses, yes, you are allowed to cancel, but only outside of the parentheses. Or you are allowed to cancel the entire parentheses. What you are not allowed to do is cancel within the parentheses. So let's revisit the expression on the lower right. Again, even though there's a plus sign, if it's within a parentheses, 
you can consider the 10 and the entire parentheses as factors. Therefore, you are allowed to cancel outside of the parentheses. What you are not allowed to do is now go ahead and try to cancel this x with this x that's within the parentheses. You're only allowed to cancel outside of the parentheses or, as I mentioned, the entire parentheses. So the expression on the right, again, would reduce to x plus 8 over x. With parentheses, sometimes if they're not present initially, you can legally add parentheses and in doing so, create a situation when you are allowed to cancel. This expression on the lower left has a negative sign. That makes 9x and 8, 81 terms. That means we are not allowed to cancel the 9s as is. However, we notice that the 81 and the 9 have a common factor, namely 9. We pull that 9 out front and we create a parentheses. When we do that, that allows us to cancel these 9s. Again, we have 9 times a parentheses. This is considered a factor times another factor. That gives us license. That makes it legal to cancel out these nines. Not the nine within, but a nine that's external to the parentheses. One thing I'd like to mention is that when you use this technique, namely when you introduce a parentheses that is not there initially in order to allow for you to cancel, always go back and double check your math. Always redistribute. Make sure that you did this correctly. So the first step would be 9 times x, and that does indeed equal 9x. Step 2 would be 9 times negative 9, and that does indeed equal negative 81. Now that you've checked your distribution, you've checked your math, you go ahead and cancel these 9s, and your final answer is x minus 9. This is a, a summary slide that shows all three rules together. First line, again, factors and multiplication signs are your friends. There's multiplication signs between these factors. That gives us license. That gives, makes it legal to cancel out these sevens, to cancel out these y's, and that results in just x for that expression. On the right, the fraction. Again, I encourage students to break down fractions as factors. It gets them in the habit of canceling legally in the presence of multiplication signs, which results in a reduced fraction. Second line, parentheses are your friends. Even though there's a minus sign, we are allowed to cancel these x minus 3s because the minus sign is within parentheses. And when we do, we cancel out the entire parentheses, or as you'll see on the next expression, we cancel outside of the parentheses, but we never cancel within the parentheses. We never do something like this, where we cancel just the x within the parentheses. So this goes, this goes, and we get two. On the right, again, there, this is considered a factor. The parentheses is considered as a whole unit. That's a factor, factor, factor. We are therefore allowed to cancel the fives. It's outside the parentheses. Now, again, what we cannot do is come along and try to cancel these y's. That would be illegal. So our final answer is going to be to cross out the fives and we have y plus 8 over y minus 3. Moving down to the final line, as I intimated earlier, positive signs, minus signs are not your friends. That makes this x and this 4 terms, not factors. These are factors because there's multiplication sign. 
These are terms. X and 11 are also terms separated by a minus sign. In this scenario, ladies and gentlemen, we are not allowed to cancel. This is an illegal maneuver. Moving to the lower right expression, we have a minus sign. That means as is, we are not allowed to cancel the 12s. However, what we do notice is that we can introduce a parentheses. Namely, we recognize that 12x and 24 have a common factor, namely 12. We pull that out. We create a parentheses situation. Before we go any further, we check our math. 12 times x is 12x, and 12 times negative 2 is minus 24. Therefore, we checked our math by distributing, and we did it correctly. Now, if we look at the next slide, I recreated this here. We pulled out our 12, and we have our x minus 2. We already checked our math. That allows us to cancel out the 12s, and our final answer is x minus 2. Now, I have found that it is very helpful in your mind to consider this parentheses as a variable. I find this is very helpful for students. So what I like to do is, when you have a parentheses, call that capital D, as in Dartmouth. Then, if you let d equal x minus 2, we can rewrite this expression as 12 times d. When the expression is written like it is here, it is easy to see why it is legal to cancel these 12s. Then we come along and we just replace d with its original form, which is x minus 2. And that is our final answer. I find that if in your mind you consider this x minus 2 parentheses as a, as a complex, as a single unit, or as a big capital D, it makes this cancellation process more clear in your mind. Okay, I promised you some examples, so here we go. On the top expression, we have multiplication signs. We have factors. There is no sign of a plus. There is no sign of a minus. Therefore, we are free to cancel out these x squareds, and our final answer would be 6. Going to the bottom expression, same thing. Multiplication signs. Factors. No evidence of a plus sign or a minus sign. So what I would do here is I would break down the 36, and I would break down the 42, and I would change the x cubed over x squared to just x. That would leave me with just 6x over 7. Now, if it was unclear what I did with the x cubed over x squared, it would be helpful to go ahead and expand that out. So the 36 and the 42, we would do the same exact thing. 6 times 6 over 6 times 7. For the x cubed, we can rewrite that as follows. Use your hidden 1, meaning we know there's a 1 there, but we typically don't write it. This is expanded out. When you do this, it's clear that you cancel two x's, the sixes, and you're left with six x over seven. In the top expression, we have a plus sign. That makes the x and the 45 terms. Because of that, we are not allowed to cancel. We do not have any factors, therefore we cannot do that. I know you're tempted to, but you cannot do that. So if you're asked to simplify this on a quiz or on your homework, you 
simply write can't simplify. Expression on the bottom. We have a multiplication sign between the 2 and the x minus 4. I'm going to think of this entire parentheses as a single unit. I'm going to call it capital D. Therefore, I have 2 times D over 2x. It's clear to me now when it's written in this fashion that I am allowed to cancel these twos. I now am left with capital D over X, and I can just simply we reduce that. We can't. The minus sign prevents us from doing so. Top expression, we have a minus sign. We have a plus sign. That means all of these entities are terms, not factors. We cannot simplify. On the bottom, we have multiplication signs. We have factors. We do have a minus sign, but it is within parentheses. We can rewrite this if we consider each of these x minus 7s as a capital D. We could rewrite it as such. When you do that, it is clear that you are allowed to cancel these d's, and you are left with 52x over d, which we know to be x minus 7. Now, you cannot cancel this x. Why? Because of the minus sign. This is our final answer. Here, on the top, we have a minus sign that makes the 6x and the 5 terms. That means we cannot cancel. I know we're tempted to, but we cannot. So this on the top, you cannot simplify. On the bottom, we have plus signs. That means as is, we cannot cancel. However, what do we notice? We notice that the 81x and the 9x squared have a common factor, namely 9x. We're going to pull that out. We are going to create a parentheses situation. Now, we are allowed to cancel. Before we do, we check our math. We check that 9x times x equals the first term, and it does, 9x squared. And then we check that 9x times 9 equals the second term, and it does 81x. Now we have a situation where we have a plus sign, but it's within parentheses. We are legally allowed to cancel. Again, we can consider these parentheses each as a capital D. That would mean you have 9x times D over D. It's clear when it's written like this that the d's can be canceled. And in this case, they completely disappear. You don't even have to rewrite x plus 9 for d. OK, these last few expressions, we're going to do them a little quicker. Top left, <clears throat> excuse me, we have minus signs, we have plus signs, but they are all within parentheses. Therefore, we are legally allowed to do this. And our final answer is x plus 17. On the upper right, we have a plus sign. That means we have terms. We are not allowed to cancel these x's. We are not allowed to cancel these 2's. We cannot do anything here. Lower left, plus sign and minus sign prevents us from doing anything. Cannot cancel the 4's. We are not allowed to cancel the Y's. Both of those are illegal maneuvers. Okay, the one on the lower right, I find it's helpful for students sometimes to separate these out a little bit. So don't hesitate to do this. Give yourself a little bit of room. Everything I'm doing now is completely legal.
okay? Now when you look here, we see the minus sign is present, but it's within parentheses. So we could cancel. We could consider this as a capital D. And if you did that, it's clear that all we have here is factors. So you could go ahead and cancel. We can cancel the 10 over the 2 and get a 5. We can cancel the x and the x squared and just get x. The y to the fourth power we can't do anything with. So our final answer, I'll write it down here, I apologize, would be 5x y to the fourth over d, or that would just be x minus 3. Again, as a final reminder, we can't do anything more. This minus sign that is present prevents us from canceling this x. I believe this is the last slide. On the upper left, again, I won't hesitate in this scenario, ladies and gentlemen, to give myself some room. Okay, if this helps you in the initial stages of learning how to cancel, I think that's fine. And I might even use my capital D here. Okay, knowing that D takes the place of what's in the parentheses. Okay, now I reassess. I have all multiplication signs. I have all factors. I'm allowed to cancel. I can't cancel within the parentheses. That's why the capital D is helpful. I, there's nothing inside the D that I could cancel. So what could I cancel? Well, really the only thing I could do is to change this 8 over 2 to a 4. And then in my final answer, I would write this as 4x to the 7th times z to the 4th. And then as I write it, the final answer, I would replace the d with z minus 3. Again, there is, we are not allowed to do anything with this z and this z. Why? Because of the minus sign. Okay, let's look at the expression in the upper right. We have 5x times x minus 3 over 5x. Okay, we consider this x minus 3 as one entity. If it's helpful, you can consider it as a capital D. Therefore, this becomes 5x times d over 5x. When it's written like this, it's more clear that this is a factor. That's a factor. Therefore, you're allowed to cancel the 5x. And then at the end, you replace d with x minus 3. And that is your final answer. You don't have to use the d. You can look at this and you can say to yourself, okay, these 5x's go, and x minus 3 is my final answer. Looking at the expression on the lower left, 5z plus 1 over 17z minus 3, we have a plus sign, we have a minus sign. That makes these terms. That means we are not allowed to cancel. We're not allowed to cancel those z's. There's nothing to pull out. Nothing, there's no way we can create a parentheses situation that will then allow us to cancel. So there's nothing we can do with that expression on the lower left. Finally, on the lower right, there's a plus sign. That means as is, we cannot cancel. We are not allowed as is to cancel this x or to cancel the 5 and the 10 and make that a 2. Both of those were illegal maneuvers. But what we can do is recognize that the 50 and the 10 have a common factor. We can pull that out front. We can create a parentheses situation. Now we have this. Before we do any canceling, we check our math. We redistribute. 10 times 5 is indeed 50. 10 times x is indeed positive 10x. So we did things correctly. Now we can look at the cancellation process. We look at these as factors. We look at this as a unit. We can call it capital D if we want. 
we only allowed to cancel outside the parentheses. We are not allowed to cancel this 5. We are not allowed to cancel this x. Both of those are illegal maneuvers. What we are allowed to do is to, however, cancel this 10 and this 5 and make this a 2. So our final answer, I'll write it up here, would be 2 times d over x. And if we replace d with 5 plus x, we could change that to 2 times 5 plus x over x.